Hey YouTube, welcome back to another video. If you want to listen with me and we can work on buzzing your Bach 5GS, check the link in the description below. I have been practicing a lot for the last year or so, mostly in isolation. Today I'm taking a day off because I've been playing kind of the last three weeks really hard and I have not taken any days off. So, I'm taking today off and I'm kind of going to go through my practice materials because obviously I play instruments every day, I have like this routine, but like what am I doing in this routine? What am I playing? I feel like some people don't really understand what it means to have kind of like a weekly or daily kind of like cycle of things that you play through. What exactly do you do during this two or three hours of practice? Well, let's look at what I've been doing. It's a little more limited than it might be if I were in my normal place because I have way more books than I do here. But this will give you an idea of what I've been hitting at least. So first of all is fundamental stuff. So like warm ups and just very basics of trombone playing. Number one on that list is this guy, the Trombone Exercise Library Project by, scroll, there we go, Elon Morgenstern. Um, this is a PDF that you can buy from Elon. Um, and it's just got a ton of stuff in it. And it's got, most importantly, the music and play alongs for every single thing. So you open this on your laptop, you hook it up to some loud speakers, which I have right here. And you just, you get a nice kind of like, drum beats and stuff, and you get not necessarily drones, but some of them are drones. You get stuff to listen to for intonation as well. Um, and if you don't understand the exercise, you can just listen to it for the first time. Um, these have been really great. I do, right now, I do this every other day. I'll do like a 40 minute, maybe it's 55 minutes. No, I think it's 40 minutes without the break. So it takes about an hour um, with five minute breaks every 10 minutes. And I'll do, 40 minutes of this every other day. I was at one point playing straight down the entire thing. It used to be on YouTube and it was just a playlist. And I'd play the entire thing every day. Not as good for me, I think. Um, and now I just do it every other day and it's just really good stuff. On the days that I don't do this, because this is my warm up, I make up my own warm up and it takes about the same amount of time. But I don't necessarily do this one every day. On the subject of basics, also the Marsteller routine. Just really, really basic stuff. Stuff you wouldn't even think is really an exercise. If you just kind of look at it, you're like, what is this even accomplishing? But it's really great. Works on intervals and just kind of like expanding the way that you can attack a bunch of different ranges. And for some reason, I haven't been playing these a lot lately. I just found them on the bottom of my stack of books and stuff. And I think I'm going to get back into it because I did this really heavily for a couple months and kind of forgot about it. Marsteller. And of course, ever-present Arbens. Um, I think people kind of, you look at this book, it's really thick. There's a lot of notes in this book. It can be really intimidating. Um, I like to keep it simple. There's the first two sections, which is just kind of like the very, very basic, um, what is it even called? first study. So I'll take the first study section and the section after that, which starts out as syncopation and then gets into a couple other things. And based on what day it is, say it's the 15th, it's not the 15th, um, but say it is, I'll do every exercise that ends in that day. So I'll do number 5, 15, 25, 35, 45, yes, there are 50 in the first section. And then in the next section, I'll do 5, 15, 25, 35. So you're only doing eight, maybe nine, maybe seven exercises. Um, and I'll just play straight down, um, you know, taking 10 minutes on, five minutes off. And that hits a lot of different areas, a couple different keys. The only problem with Arvin's is he doesn't like to work with like sharp keys or the kind of weird stuff very much, but an invaluable resource. And if you want to get brave, there's the entire rest of the book, which has a bunch of great stuff in it. Lately, I've been working out of the interval section and the grappetto section. I mean, there's just so much in here. Um, don't feel like you just need to play it cover to cover. 
you know, don't just sit down and like play the first 30 things in one sitting. Take it by little uh, snippets and it'll be super, super good for you. So the next section after fundamentals, and I, I really enjoy fundamentals, I'm not gonna lie, is etudes. So fundamentals are like kind of the building blocks or the base of our pyramid of trombone playing. Gotta have that to do the next section. And uh, etudes are kind of like putting fundamentals together but then adding more music to it. Because the fundamentals can kind of leave out the music portion, right? And so I have etudes kind of for a couple different instruments here. Um, let's look at, um, here's a couple, the Koprash book, um, usually used for like tenor trombone. I actually haven't been playing these that much. I have like four copies of this book for some reason. Um, and sometimes I'll get it out and play a couple. And the first probably four or five of these I've played a lot of times. I need to play this one more often. The other book I use a lot more often is the Tyrell book. I'm not sure why. They're kind of the same things. Maybe they're a little bit longer, usually. Um, but I've been playing a lot out of this because it's just very trombone-y. Um, if you think just like turn-of-the-century trombone player, this is exactly what they're playing all the time. And not necessarily applicable to like everything that you're going to play on trombone, but it just kind of hits a lot of different areas, makes you play a bunch of different notes, a bunch of different ranges, a bunch of different keys. Um, and if you really want, you can make them relatively musical. So that's good stuff too. Um, usually play the Tyrells on tenor trombone, but I'll also play them on bass trombone as written and down an octave. Um, what else do I have here? So a crossover book that I use for everything, of course. Bordoni, also known as Rochu. Um, Rochu is the guy who transcribed the Bordoni exercises, so he does get some credit, but these are written by Bordoni. These are vocalises for singers, literally vocalises, vocal, get it? La la la. And uh, he's the guy who wrote them. And this time around, Michael Mohokei, whose name you cannot read here because my cover is coming off, um, transcribed them all again and changed the keys of a couple of them. And, um, basically just did a really great job of putting books one, two, and three together. Rochu only did book one and I think part of book two, but this is every single one, one through 120. I actually only have through 119 because the last couple pages are gone. Um, I have put a lot of time into the first 40 of these or so, because most trombone players do, and earlier in the pandemic, I decided to play through the entire book, and so I have. I played all 118 of, or so that I have in here, except I didn't do the ones in alto clef. Um, after book one, they are in tenor and alto clef, kind of alternating, not quite. Most of them are in tenor. But I skipped the ones in alto clef. I'm holding off on alto for the moment. Um, but I did every single one in tenor. It's kind of interesting because... Uh, they start to look really difficult, but they actually aren't that hard. I thought they were going to be like way harder to get towards the end of the book. They really don't get that hard. And Bordonis are really great for a ton of different reasons. They're also not great at some things. They're not like the end-all be-all of etudes. Something you should play on all instruments. I play these on everything. I play them on tenor, small tenor too. I play them on euphonium. I play them on bass trombone as written and down an octave. Um, even the tenor clef ones, I'll play those in tenor clef down an octave on bass trombone. Really great resource, and every trombonist should have this. Um, I have a whole stack of things that I play on bass trombone. Mainly, I'm playing the stuff on tenor trombone, though, just like down an octave or whatever. But I also have the Blazovich book um, for B flat tuba. I do play these on bass trombone, but I primarily play these on contrabass because um, they're a little bit low. It's kind of like in the staff down to pedal F is kind of the range for these. And on bass trombone, that's a good range to be fluid in. Um, but for contrabass, it's kind of like the money range. It's everything you're going to play, basically. And these hit a lot of that, and they get kind of like annoyingly difficult. You know, there's mixed meters. Um, there's like basically every key. Um, kind of some fast stuff, lots of big leaps and stuff. Blazovich is really good. So uh, another great resource if you play tuba or bass trombone or contra. I also have this Lou Gillis 28 for bass trombone. 
with F attachment, F attachment in quotes. Um, I've also been playing these on bass and contra. Kind of basic, definitely kind of like early etudes, but I just found this book and I was like, hey, may as well give it a shot. So after etudes is what I like to call kind of like real music, actual stuff. And I feel like this book kind of is etudes, but it also is real music. And real music for me at the moment is stuff that I find fun to play. Not necessarily that I'm like working up for a recital, but stuff that I want to play. Because um, I don't necessarily want to play etudes all the time, but this is the Harmonic Dexterity book by Bob McChesney. And it's a bunch of basically just jazz etudes for bass trombone. And it's got a play along CD. Luckily I have the MP3, so I don't have to find a CD player somewhere. Um, but they're just really fun. They're really hard. Some of them are beyond my ability even now, having practiced them a lot. Um, but they're just really fun. They work on a bunch of different styles, just crazy amounts of like accidentals and leaps and stuff. Really good book to play out of. So this is etudes, but it's also fun. If I'm having a damn bass trombone where I'm just like, man, I do not want to play Bordoni, I'll be like, cool, I'm gonna get these out. I'm gonna play these. So fun music on the other instruments. Um, sometimes I find solos, like you would play in a recital, fun. And so I have the St. Sans Cavatine and the Hindemith Sonata for a large tenor trombone. I hate the St. Sans Cavatine for tenor trombone, but everybody plays it, so I decided I would learn it. I've learned it, and I'm probably not going to play it ever again. The Hindemith Sonata, it's actually pretty fun. I enjoy it, and I can't play it. So, still working on that. Um, for bass trombone, I have the Culver Suite for unaccompanied bass trombone. It's kind of like cello suite-esque uh, music for bass trombone. Pretty difficult, very rangy, just kind of like playing by yourself for a long time. Much like the cello suites. A little bit more trombone-y, but not really. Personally, I prefer the cello suites. Um, this piece of music is okay, but I remember trying to play it several years ago and I just couldn't. So I got it out because I was like, hey, may as well try to get better at it. I have the Horowitz um, Concerto for Bassoon, which is also the Horowitz Concerto for Euphonium. On the inside it says Euphonium Concerto, so it's just, it is both. Um, I decided, since I'm not very good at Euphonium, I may as well try and work up a solo piece. And I have put some work into the first movement, not as much as I should. I'm still not one of these people. So still working on this, and of course I don't have a Euphonium because it's getting worked on. And then for contrabass, I have the Tomasi to be or not to be um, monologue. And this is just kind of like meant for tuba-ish, but also you can play it on bass trombone. And I'm playing it on contra, and it's just fun. It's not easy on contrabass, at least for me, but it's really fun to just kind of like make like real solo music on bass trombone, which honestly, not many people do, and maybe nobody should do. Uh, but this, quite fun. People say it's better on tuba. I don't care. I'm going to play it on bass trombone. And then on the small tenor trombone, I have some really fun stuff. This is the fun music that I usually choose. This one's not as much fun. The Gordon Goodwin's um, Big Fat Band lead trombone book. It's just got how many charts? Like a dozen maybe of the Big Fat Band's tunes, and it's just the lead trombone part. So you just go to YouTube, look at the song you want to play, Press play and just read it down. And that's not music. This is music. There we go. And you just read one of these down. And it's uh, it's fun. I'm not like the hugest fan of Gordon Goodwin's uh, writing the music itself. But it's fun to play along with a big band playing lead trombone. And that's why, luckily, I have some more big band charts and horn section charts um, right here. And so I'll print one of these off find a YouTube recording, and I'll just work it up. I have this really difficult horn section arrangement of Uptown Funk that has just got a million notes, and I'm still kind of working on it. Um, I've got another Gordon Goodwin tune that's better than the ones in that book that's got a really hard soli. I've got some Sammy Nestico. I've got some Count Basie. Just kind of like fun stuff to play. It kind of reminds me like, oh yeah, playing in an ensemble is fun. 
And apart from that, sometimes I'll get out on uh, tromboneexcerpts.com and I'll put up the ring cycle and I'll play through all the fun stuff on the contrabass. I'll do fun stuff. So we got fundamentals, we got etudes, we got fun music. That's basically all I've been practicing for the last year. If I didn't have a limited selection of books, and I have a couple more that I have not played out of, there would be more variety to this, I think. Uh, but even then, I've got plenty of stuff to work on. Can't work on it today because I'm trying to take the day off. But hopefully that gives you some idea of what's in my practice and what could be in your practice. That's it. I'll see you guys next time.